Hello and welcome to a new European Agenda program. Today our main topics are uh, Turkey's war crimes as well as the uh, freedom for Öcalan, the importance of the freedom for Öcalan and the isolation on uh, Mr. Uh, Abdullah Öcalan. So I would like to welcome my guests uh, today. We have two very important guests. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, dear uh, Doug Nichols, GFTU, General Secretary uh, Doug Nichols. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, uh, dear uh, Stefan Smaley, uh, the uh, member of the Unison National Executive Council. Thanks for joining us today. Pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to start with uh, Stefan first of all. Dear Stefan, we have uh, talked about uh, the reports also that uh, has been published by Peace in Kurdistan as well about the uh, Turkey's war crime. So I would like to first uh, start with the one of the members of the uh, of the NATO is Turkey which is recently uh, in recent years uh, has been found to have supported ISIS gangs invaded the Kurdish region of Syria uh, treated the Cyprus as well and been involved in incarcerations into Kurdistan and in northern Iraq as well. So recently there have been uh, reports of Turkey using chemical weapons against uh, Kurdish forces and civilians and the places that uh, the villages uh, has been bombarded by uh, heavy chemical weapons as well by Turkey. What is your view of these actions first of all? Well, these actions are scandalous. Um, the, the actions are, are war, it's war crimes. There's no really any other way of describing uh, what uh, Turkey have been doing, both in Syria and in uh, northern Iraq in recent times. The specific allegations about chemical weapons, which are allegations, and uh, we've been calling for proper investigations into these allegations, because clearly if Turkey are using chemical weapons, then that should be condemned completely by the international community and sanctions taken against Turkey against them. But as a NATO member, um, the NATO's uh, rules should prohibit uh, Turkey acting in, in this way. So you know, they should be held to account uh, within the NATO countries uh, for their actions as well. Uh Dear Stefan, uh, also uh, a, an extra question to carry on this topic, if you can answer very short, very briefly, because I'm going to ask the similar to the Doug as well, the arms trade. The UK is the biggest arms trader to Turkey, and as we know, these chemical weapons are, uh, most of them are produced in Bristol. And this, uh, this uh, gun trade is still on between UK and Turkey. How would you going to evaluate that? Because many MEPs are now calling after the Sweden and Finland issue as well. Uh, they're calling to ban uh, uh, this weapon sales to Turkey. How would you comment on that very shortly? Well, we, and many of us in the trade union movement in the UK and uh, Peace in Kurdistan particularly have called uh, for a ban on arms sales to Turkey for some time now because of the way in which they have been using those arms, not just to in, in, in defence of their own territory, but uh, attacking their own citizens in Turkey but all, and, and also in Syria and uh, in Iraq as well. Um, unfortunately, the UK government it seems to continue to be very keen to sell arms and allow arms sales to, to Turkey. Um, and that's something which we in, in the UK have to take up strongly with our own government to challenge that, because they should not be selling arms that are going to be used in the ways in which Turkey are using them. Chemical weapons as well, I would like to ask you what is your opinion on the repeated reports of Turkey's use of chemical weapons against the Kurds. There has been many reports has been published uh, about these allegations. There has been uh, so many uh, different uh, reports uh, by uh, Morningstar as well has been involved in that Peace in Kurdistan campaign. Uh, also, K and K National Office as well. Uh, there is many repeated reports, and uh, there has been more than 1,300 times uh, chemical weapons attacks to media defense zones. So, uh, how would what is your opinion about that? How would you going to comment on this issue? Well, the um, British trade union movement is united in its condemnation 
of this. And the last report that was done um, by an investigative journalist uh, was written down into a report which we've distributed widely. And in fact, we had a well-attended national online seminar to look at the findings of that report. Um, so it's obviously utterly unacceptable. Um, but of course, it's part of a big spectrum of weapons that the Turkish state is using in its genocide against the Kurdish people. There have been many forms of brutality, whether it's the imprisonment of the journalists and others who've tried to expose what's happening, or whether it's the massacres that we've seen uh, using conventional weapons, or whether it's the imprisonment of people and the locking up of human rights activists, trade unionists and progressive people, or whether it's the attempted banning of political parties. This is all part of the unacceptable spectrum of war against progressive people in Turkey, actually, as well <coughs> as the Kurdish people, excuse me. So we need to uh, increase our efforts and we need to put more pressure on those organisations theoretically designed to ban the use of these weapons and to look at human rights abuses who've not been doing their job. So the trade union movement needs to put much more pressure on them. Thank you, dear Doug. Uh, also, I, I want you to underline that uh, because it's a very important issue with these chemical weapon attacks to the region, it's not only the Kurdish uh, defense uh, uh, Kurdish uh, freedom fighters have been affected and uh, nearly 46 uh, Kurdish freedom fighters has been lost their life by uh, chemical weapon attacks but also uh, the villages around media defense zones the the civilians that they living in these villages are being affected as well this is a really serious war crime uh, I want you to highlight that as well. How would you going to evaluate that very shortly? Well, you, you've said it all, Aram. You've said exactly what's happening and why it is a war crime and why the war crime investigators should start investigating along with the chem chemical weapons control bodies. And perhaps people in Bristol who've got a lively uh, socialist tradition and Recently, you'll probably have seen they pulled down a statue of uh, one of the old slave traders that was put up in Bristol. Uh, perhaps we need to do a bit more campaigning around Bristol with those who work at the factory and own the factory that is producing some of this stuff, which is killing our comrades in another part of the world. Thank you, dear. Like, uh, dear Stefan, uh, let's carry on with you. Uh, so the, uh, I would like to talk about the Peace in Kurdistan campaign has published uh, another report and you are the one of the leading names on that uh, preparation of this report which uh, states that uh, Abdullah Öcalan is held in the most extreme conditions of isolation of any uh, political prisoners in Europe. How has that situation came uh, it came about uh, we, we, after the, the, on the second part of our program. We're going to talk about the uh, isolation of uh, Mr. Abdullah Öcalan. So, uh, how would you going to comment on the, the, the report and the situation of Mr. Öcalan? Mr. Öcalan has been kept in uh, totally unacceptable circumstances for for many years now. Um, uh, the Turkey, the Turkish state seemed to believe that by humiliating and Oshlin um, by in that way, he, they would somehow undermine the, the, the will of the Kurdish people to continue their struggle for democracy and, and freedom. Um, I don't think that's working. I think uh, Oshlin, even though he's been kept in those conditions, remains a beacon of hope for the not just the Kurdish people, but all people in Turkey and in the region, and indeed wider than that, people in the UK look, increasingly look to Oshlin's uh, teachings uh, for a way forward um, in, in the Middle East uh, in relation to developing democracy and peace and freedom for people. So um, the, 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 the decisions or the, the continuation of the isolation of Oshlin um, is a vain attempt, in my opinion, to uh, uh, demobilize the Kurdish uh, freedom movement and it, and it won't work, hasn't worked and it won't work.
Uh, dear Doug, what are your conclusions about the treatment of Öcalan after 23 years of incarceration as still Öcalan is under isolation, still the PKK is on the uh, forbidden organizations list. So how is your, uh, what is your comments about the, uh, what is your comments about the uh, Öcalan's uh, uh, incarceration? Uh, I mean, he's obviously such a force for peace and democracy, unity, in the region that he's being kept in the conditions he is. He's so powerful. They've got to try and do what they've done, as far as I'm aware, to no equivalent political prisoner in the history of the world, try and keep him isolated from family, friends, lawyers and his people. But as Stephen said earlier on, it's not working. It's not working. The message is there regardless of what they do to him. The solidarity is growing throughout the world. Uh, more and more people are aware of what's happening uh, on the Imrani Islands. We have three delegations on the Imrani study visit this year from our trade unions in the GFTU. More and more people are aware of it. More and more people are angry about it. All of our trade unions uh, are, are concerned. The TUC, the main trade union centre here, has expressed its solidarity. And that treatment, when I went on the, um, the recent study visit, that treatment uh, which we heard about from his lawyers is quite exceptional, quite exceptional in, in, in the world history of political prisoners. No one's been treated that way. Mandela wasn't treated as badly as that. Um, and there are various activities and plans that we've got uh, starting in September to re-raise these issues and put pressure on again uh, to the human rights organisations, the Turkish government, to all those that need to be influenced about this totally, totally unacceptable enforced isolation uh, on one of the greatest political leaders in the world. Thank you, Doug. Uh, let's carry on with Stefan for now and we will get back to you. Uh, dear Stefan, uh, the, another significant issue is about Europe's uh, silence. Uh, why is the European Union, which constantly sells itself very well on human rights, democracy and uh, compliance with the international agreements, is still silent about uh, Mr. Rojalan's isolation, who is uh, deprived uh, of all human rights. Why is there still no uh, reaction, any reaction against Turkey? Do you think this is political? I think it's very political. Yes, it's the. I mean, it strikes at the, the the hypocrisy of uh, European governments, who yes, they do talk about human rights and they, you know, put themselves forward as the 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 guardians of of human rights and all democratic justice and all all the rest. Of it. But in reality, when it comes down to it, the politics is an extension of of e economics. They they have economic interests and military interests. In, in, in the region, they wish to keep Turkey on their side, and therefore they give Turkey a free hand in a whole number of, of areas, including uh, when it comes to uh, the incarceration and isolation of Abdul Ocalan. Um They will not um, break for that because it's not in their interest to do that. And it's only through the uh, building of pressure within European states and the UK and elsewhere um, that to put pressure on our politicians will any progress be made on that uh, over the, in, the, in the next period and unfortunately that's that i think that's the case um so there's a great responsibility on people like myself the trade union movement uh, and others um in the uk and across europe to continue raising uh, the issue of uh, Oshland's uh, isolation to put pressure on our own government and expose our own government's hypocrisy on these on these issues Thank you, Stefan. Uh, dear Doug, uh, since from the beginning you are a part of the uh, Freedom for Öcalan campaign, trade unions, uh, Freedom for Öcalan campaign in Britain, so you've done a great job as well. You have been campaigning for uh, Freedom for Öcalan as uh, Stefan uh, uh, is carrying this uh, campaign as well. So uh, this is a very important question for to develop the campaign basically. So the Freedom for Ojalan campaign in UK, uh, what role can the trade union
union uh, movement uh, play in the struggle to free Öcalan first of all? And do you think this campaign should be work harder to reach out to trade unions in uh, in Europe as well? Uh, yeah, and on the last part, uh, yes, there's always more to be done with our sister trade unions throughout the world, not just Europe. Uh, but most of our unions are part of union internationals, uh, the general union federations throughout the world. The trade union movement in Britain, six and a half million people, still remains the most um, democratic and the most uh, organised uh, part of, of uh, the campaigning uh, political world. And um, that's why we've focused on doing uh, awareness raising work and campaigning through the trade, trade union uh, movement here. And uh, as I say, that's, that's meant that the main bodies in the trade union movement support this campaign and are aware of the issues in ways that they haven't been previously. Thank you, dear Doug. Uh, uh, dear Stefan, anything else that you would like to add on? Anything uh, I didn't ask about the Turkey's war crimes as well as the uh, latest attacks to Rojava? I would just, well, I just want to say that the my, my union is, is very close relationships now with uh, a number of Turkish trade unions, and we hear about the suppression of democracy within Turkey and the, 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 the ability of trade union activists like myself to go about their normal activities is, is criminalised and associated with terrorism. That is linked to the isolation of Oshlan, it's linked to the, uh, the listening of the PKK, and it's linked to the war crimes that Turkey is, is uh, perpetrating at the moment in Rojava and uh, Iraq. All of these um, things are linked and that is why we in Europe should be making a stand, should be organising, should be demanding our governments uh, take put pressure on Turkey to, to end these abuses of human rights and freedoms that they, 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 they restrict their, on their people. Uh, this is a struggle for decency, human rights and democracy and we should be standing foursquare against the actions of the Turkish state and on, on behalf and stand alongside Oshlan, PKK and the Kurdish people in the region. Thank you, Stefan. Dear Stefan Smaili, thanks for accepting that interview today. And dear Doug Nichols, thank you very much for joining us and thanks uh, for your valuable comments today. Thanks a lot, Aram. Good luck. Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Uh, today on our special European Agenda program, we had a member of the Unison National Executive Council, Stefan Smaley, and GFTU, uh, General Federation of the Trade Unions in Britain, General Secretary Doug Nichols. Thanks for joining us and we will see you on the next European Agenda program.